Hello everyone, in this video we will discuss about rheumatic heart disease. We will discuss about the pathogenesis, the morphology and the clinical features of this disease. Firstly, going to what is rheumatic fever. Now, rheumatic fever is an acute immunologically mediated. It's an inflammatory disease which occurs after few weeks after an episode of group A streptococcal pharyngitis. So, there is firstly there is pharyngitis after which an immunologically mediated reaction takes place which is known as rheumatic fever. Now, rheumatic fever has a presentation uh, in, uh, it involves the heart also which is known as rheumatic heart disease okay now acute rheumatic fever occurs mostly after 10 days to 6 weeks after the exposure to the group A streptococci and this occurs only in about 3% of the infected patients also it involves mostly the children uh, from the age of 5 to 15 now with the development within uh, especially in the developed nations the rheumatic fever is very low in incidence now going to the pathogenesis now pathogenesis uh, because this is an immunologically mediated reaction okay so what happens is there is group a streptococci this group a streptococci has something known as m protein now this m protein uh, triggers the response in the uh, human body and there is production of antibody against it and there is production of CD4 T cells against it. Okay, There is antibody production and CD4 T cells which are produced against it. Now these antibodies they also cross react with the antigens in the heart. Why? Because the M protein, this M protein of streptococci, it resemb resembles certain antigens of the heart also. So antibodies and CD4 T cells, these can also cross react with the uh, uh, heart tissue. So the damage to the heart tissue is combination of both antibody and T cell mediated reactions. Also I have a separate video of hypersensitivity reactions. Uh, which I uh, have discussed this in detail over there. Now, uh, in pathogenesis, we already understand this is an uh, immunologically mediated reaction and it can uh, uh, involve the heart and it can involve all the layers of heart. That means there can be endocarditis, there can be myocarditis and there can be pericarditis and this is known as pancarditis. So, the presentation, the involvement in the heart is pancarditis. Going to the morphology, this is very important part, morphology. So, I already have told you that it involves all the three layers of the heart, that is pericarditis, myocarditis and endocarditis. So, firstly, let's discuss what is the lesion in the myocardium. So, the lesion which occurs in the myocardium is known as the ash of bodies. Now, what are the ash of bodies? So, in this picture, in histopathology, you can see these are the muscle layer of the heart and here there is a body this is known as the ash of body now this ash of body is made up of there are lymphocytes over here there are plasma cells over here and there are special type of macrophages which are these macrophages so these macrophages are very typical of rheumatic heart disease these are known as the anishkov cells okay these are known as the anishkov cells uh, here you can see these are the Anishkov cells. They are plump activated macrophages. They are very pathognomic of rheumatic fever. Now why? Uh, what is very characteristic of these cells is that the chromatin, the nucleus, uh, the nucleus has chromatin. Now this chromatin is it has a wavy ribbon like appearance. So these are also known as caterpillar cells because they resemble somewhat like caterpillar. Okay. So these are also known as caterpillar cells. You can see over here. Now going to another lesion which occurs in rheumatic heart disease is the vegetations. Now what are the vegetations? Uh, whenever there is inflammation, here inflammation of endocardium takes place. Now this results in fibrinoid necrosis within the cusps of the uh, valves or along the tendinous cords of the valve. Now overlying these necrotic uh, foci, there can be some growth which we, you can see. Uh, in uh, layman like in some growth which we can see these are 1 to uh, 2 mm vegetations these are known as veruke okay so these you can see also uh, uh, okay veruke let's discuss about the vegetations first in various diseases 
now there are various type of vegetations so in rheumatic heart disease you can see there are these yellow ones these are the vegetations we have very small vegetations and these occur along the line of the closure of the uh, wall now this is infective on endocarditis now very characteristic uh, vegetation is it is very bulky it's very big okay and it can extend it to the cordate tendony also okay then there is a, a disease known as non bacterial thrombotic endocarditis here also you can see similar uh, uh, lesions like that of rheumatic heart disease but these are less in number and they are little bit uh, small to medium size and very important one is libman sachs endocarditis in here you can see the vegetations they occur on both side of the wall leaflets this is very important uh, in respect of multiple choice questions so if they ask the walls uh, along both side of wall uh, leaflets it is in libman sachs in infective endocarditis it is bulky small warty vegetations you find in rheumatic heart disease now going to the mitral valve lesions so a very and the uh, mitral stenosis takes place uh, in rheumatic heart disease it's very characteristic because mitral valve is virtually always involved in uh, rheumatic heart disease so what happens is in here uh, mostly mitral valve will be involved uh, because uh, when there is chronic uh, rheumatic heart disease in acute rheumatic heart disease it will not be involved so much but if uh, this, it progresses to chronic heart disease there will be leaflet thickening of the walls there will be commissural fusion shortening and there will be thickening and fusion of the tendinous cords because of the fibrosis and repeated inflammation chronic inflammation so because of this fibrosis uh, the wall changes its shape uh, it becomes uh, like this this is uh, typically known as fish mouth or button hole stenosis which takes place in rheumatic heart disease now going to the clinical features clinical features uh, in case of rheumatic heart disease is firstly is a very important which is known as migratory polyarthritis uh, why it is known as migratory polyarthritis because the inflammation of the joints it migrates from one joint one large joint to another and the uh, previous joint uh, it heals spontaneously there is no residual disability so it is known as migratory polyarthritis then there is pancarditis which we have already understood then there is subcutaneous nodules so we, uh, we can see in this picture there is subcutaneous nodule you can see over here then there is something known as arrhythma marginatum you see a ring like lesion and there is central clearing then there is sendham scoria which is uh, involuntary uh, movement of the uh, hands so there is a criteria to diagnose rheumatic uh, heart disease you have a criteria which is known as jones criteria so it is established by so firstly there should be evidence of preceding group a streptococcal infection so by lab you can find any antibodies against this group a streptococcal infection so firstly this with presence of two of the major manifestations which we have already discussed firstly that is the pancarditis the migratory polyarthritis the sendham scoria the rhythma marginatum or subcutaneous nodule these were the major manifestations and one major or two minor manifestation now two uh, the minor manifestation include like fever arthralgia or any acute phase reactant like crp if, if it is increased so these are those so diagnosis will be established by these criteria this was all about rheumatic heart disease uh, thanks for watching this video do ask any queries in the comment box do like share and subscribe to this channel if you like these videos thank you